In this video, I'll work through an example of using the first and second derivatives of a function to find features of its graph. The function I want to work with is h of x, which is equal to x to the one-third plus x to the four-thirds. This function is defined for all real numbers, and I want to find out where the function is increasing and decreasing, where it has local max and min values, where it's concave up and down, and where it has inflection points. Let's start with thinking about where it's increasing and decreasing. We can get information about that by looking at the first derivative, h prime, because the function will be increasing where h prime of x is positive, and it'll be decreasing where h prime of x is negative. When we calculate h prime of x, we get 1 third times x to the minus 2 thirds plus 4 thirds times x to the 1 third by using the power rule. Instead of having to work with negative exponents, I'm going to rewrite this derivative as 1 third times 1 over x to the 2 thirds plus 4 thirds x to the 1 third. And now I'm going to go ahead and try to get a common denominator. It looks like if I take the denominator of 3 times x to the 2 thirds, that can be a common denominator for both of these terms. So I'll rewrite again. The first term is already over the common denominator. And the second term, which I'll write as 4 times x to the 1 third over 3, I'll multiply that by x to the 2 thirds over x to the 2 thirds to put it over the common denominator. It gives me 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds plus 4. Let's see, x to the 1 third times x to the 2 thirds. When I multiply those x's, I add the exponents. So that's going to give me x to the 1 third plus 2 thirds, or just x to the 1, or x, over my denominator of 3x to the 2 thirds. So my first derivative can be rewritten over a common denominator like this. Now since I want to find out where my derivative is positive and negative, let me start by finding out where my derivative is 0 and doesn't exist. In between the x values where the derivative is 0 and doesn't exist, that's where I'll find the places where the derivative is positive and negative. So h prime of x does not exist when the denominator 0 is the only issue here. So that would be when 3x to the 2 thirds is 0. In other words, when x is 0 h prime of x is 0, that's only going to happen when its numerator is 0. 1 plus 4x is 0, so that's when x is equal to negative 1 fourth. I'll go ahead and put those values on my number line, negative 1 fourth and 0. And now I'll use test values in these other regions to determine whether my h prime is positive or negative. It's uh, 0 here, and it does not exist here. OK, so for example, I could use x equals negative 4, for example. When I plug in negative 4 to my derivative, well, the numerator is going to be negative, but the denominator is actually going to be positive. It is possible to take x to the 2 thirds power when x is negative 4, because negative 4 to the 2 thirds, that means the same thing as negative 4 to the 1 third squared, since once you take a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. These are equivalent. But that's the same thing as the cube root of negative 4, which is something kind of complicated, but it is a negative number. And when I take that negative number and square it, I get a positive number. So negative 4 to the 2 thirds exists. It's a positive number. And the, so the denominator is positive, but the numerator is negative. So I'm going to have a negative value here. Now, in between negative fourth and 0, there's not much space there. But if I think of taking a very tiny negative number, the denominator will still be positive because I'm taking a negative number, cube rooting it, that's a negative number, and then squaring it, which gives it positive. So the denominator will be positive. But when I do a teeny, teeny, tiny negative number, then 1 plus 4x will be positive. Like if x were like negative a tenth, then 
then 1 plus 4 times negative a tenth would still be positive. So positive over positive is positive, and my derivative is positive in this region between negative a fourth and 0. Now I need a test value on this side, so maybe x equals, uh, say, 8. And again, just thinking about positive and negative is all I care about. The numerator will be positive, and the denominator, take the cube root and square it. Well, that's going to be positive for sure. Cube root is already positive. Squaring it makes anything positive. So I've got positive over positive, which is positive again. So my function is going to be, my derivative goes from negative to positive to positive. My function itself is going to go from decreasing to increasing to increasing. And so now I know the answer to my increasing decreasing question. It's increasing when x is in the interval from negative a fourth to infinity. Now, you might hesitate for a moment, as I just did, and worry about, uh, is it really increasing here at when x equals 0, where the derivative doesn't exist? Uh, in fact, it will still be increasing if, it's just, if the derivative is just 0 or doesn't exist at a single number, so long as it's increasing on either side, uh, in the sense that if I compare the function's value at 0 to the function's value at a number slightly bigger than 0, the function's value here will be bigger than its value here. We can also write down that h of x is decreasing when x is in the interval from negative infinity to negative a fourth. We're also in a good position to figure out the local max and min values, because since the function is decreasing as we approach negative a fourth, has a critical number at negative a fourth, and then it's increasing after negative a fourth, we have to have a local minimum here at negative one fourth. If we wanted to find out the corresponding y value, what's the local minimum value, we would then plug in to our original function and find evaluate h of negative one fourth, which is negative one fourth to the one third power plus negative one fourth to the four thirds power. We could simplify that a little bit, maybe rewrite it as the cube root of negative a fourth plus the cube root of negative a fourth times negative a fourth, or three fourths times the cube root of negative a fourth. So the minimum point is going to be at the point with x value negative a fourth, y value three fourths times the cube root of negative a fourth. Since we're asked to find the local min value, that would be the y value of 3 fourths times the cube root of negative a fourth. Now what about local max points and local max values? Well, h of x only has, the only candidates for local max and min values are these critical numbers, negative a fourth and zero. And we already saw that negative a fourth corresponded to a local min. So the only possible candidate for a local max would be when x is zero. But near zero, my derivative goes from positive to positive. So my function's going from increasing to increasing. So there's no local min or local max there. And h of x has no local max values. Next, let's go on to consider concavity. To determine concavity, we want to look at the second derivative, because concave up corresponds to h double prime of x being positive, and concave down corresponds to h double prime of x being less than 0, negative. So h double prime of x taking the derivative of the derivative, I'm going to use this version of the derivative because this is easy to take, easier to take the derivative of because of we can just use the power rule. Here we'd have to use the quotient rule. So I'm going to go to this version and I get h double prime of x is 1 third times negative 2 thirds, so that's negative 2 ninths x to the minus 5 thirds, subtracting 1 from the exponent there, and then plus 4 thirds times 1 third is 4 ninths, 
times x to the minus 2 thirds, subtracting 1 from the exponent there. Again, I can clean this up a little bit, get rid of my negative exponents, make this an x to the 5 thirds on the downstairs, and this one an x to the 2 thirds on the downstairs. And my least common denominator looks like it's going to be 9 times x to the 5 thirds would be a good common denominator. And so my first term already has that as a common denominator. And my second term needs to be multiplied by x to the 3 thirds, or just x over x, to get that x to the 5 thirds there. When I simplify, I'm getting minus 2 plus 4x over 9x to the 5 thirds. Again, if I want to look at where h double prime is positive and negative to look at concavity, I first want to find where h double prime of x does not exist and where h double prime of x equals 0. The second derivative doesn't exist where the denominator is 0, or 9x to the 5 thirds equals 0, in other words, where x is 0. And the second derivative is 0, where its numerator is 0. So that's where negative 2 plus 4x equals 0, which is where x is equal to 1 half. So I'm going to put on my number line 0 and 1 half. That's where h double prime is not existing and 0. And I can use test values. So let's try, for example, x equals maybe negative 1. Put that into h double prime of x. Negative 1 will make my numerator negative, And it will also make my denominator negative. That's because negative 1 to the 5 thirds is the same thing as negative 1 to the 1 third to the 5th. Well, the cube root of negative 1 is a negative number. In fact, it's negative 1. Raising it to the fifth power still gives us a negative number. All right, so my denominator is uh, negative, and my numerator, I said, was negative, so that ratio is positive. Now I need a test value in between 0 and 1 half, for example, 1 fourth. Uh, that's going to make my numerator negative and my denominator positive, so that ratio will be minus. And then a test value bigger than a half, for example, 1. That's going to make my numerator positive and my denominator positive. So that ratio is going to be positive. And so that means that uh, my h double prime is positive over here and positive over here and negative in between. So I'll write that down that my h of x is concave up when x is between negative infinity and 0, together with 1 half to infinity. And h of x, my original function, is concave down from 0 to 1 half, where the second derivative is negative. I now can find my inflection points. My inflection points are where I change concavity. So that would be x equals 0 and x equals 1 half. Those are the x values. If I wanted the y values also, I'd need to plug into those x values into h, my original function, to find the y values. And it's possible to work out that h of 0 is 0, so that's an inflection point of 0, 0, and h of 1 half is going to be 3 halves times the cube root of 1 half. So that inflection point would be 1 half, and the y value is 3 halves cube root of 1 half. So that completes my inventory of h's behavior based on its first and second derivative. So in this video, we use the first derivative to find where the original function h is increasing and decreasing, and where it has local max and min values. 
we used h double prime, the second prime derivative, to find where the function is concave up and down and where it has inflection points. It is also possible to use the second derivative to help find local maxes and mins. I invite you to go back and look, and at that critical number x equals zero, h double prime was actually positive concave up function, indicating that that critical point corresponded to a local min.